from their inception to the end of the 18th century, first-rate ships of the line in the Royal Navy had almost all been effectively artisan ships, one-off constructions expected to last decades in service, spending much of it in ordinary or reserve. A couple here and there had been built to the same plans, but nothing that you could really call a class. That changed in the 1790s. The on-again, off-again wars with France and Spain had reached a point of being an almost forever war. Uh, by the end of the 18th century, the British Empire had been at war with one or the other powers, or both, for more of the last hundred years than they hadn't. Even longer if you counted wars against French or Spanish allies, where those two countries were technically at peace, but heavily supporting their allies. This meant the Royal Navy not only had to grow, but its first rates were seeing a lot of use, and they were outnumbered. By the middle of the 1790s, the Royal Navy had six, including the freshly launched Ville de Paris, which was the only British-built ship rated at the time for more than around 100 guns, with 110-gun nominal rating. The Spanish, on the other hand, had nine, and the French had six, having just lost two and most of these carried considerably more guns than their British counterparts. To rectify this, the Admiralty planned to construct additional first rates, and plans for a new ship, HMS Caledonia, began to be drafted up. The Ville de Paris had a slightly enlarged half-sister, the Hibernia, then in the initial stages of construction, and this design was upscaled yet again, taking her to a 120-gun ship from the initial plans, which had been for another 100-gunner. The design work and the seasoning of the timbers went on from her order date in 1795 until her keel was finally laid down at the start of 1805, a decade later, which allowed for such a radical set of changes. These also included ensuring the main gun deck was about six foot above the waterline, which would allow the heaviest guns to be fought in almost any weather that was conducive to battle, something many previous ships of the line on all sides had suffered problems with. The stern was also altered so as not to overhang quite as much, and when launched in late June 1808, she was the largest and most heavily armed vessel built in a British dockyard. Armed with a main gun deck battery of 32 single 32 pounder guns, middle gun deck with 34 24 pounders, and an upper gun deck of 34 18 pounders. The quarter deck carried another 6 12 pounders and 10 32 pounder carronades whilst the forecastle had two 12-pounder long guns and two 32-pounder carronades. The poop deck also had six 24-pounder carronades, which those of you quick at maths will realise adds up to 126 guns. This is because the last six didn't have gun ports, merely positions firing through gaps in the railings, and so they weren't part of a rated armament. Commissioning into the fleet three months later, her sailing and general qualities were excellent. So good, in fact, that she outperformed the Nelson class of 120 gunners that had been designed, ordered, and laid down during Caledonia's extended design and build process. This, in turn, meant that she would become the basis for further first rates, and within a few years of her entering service, two more ships, Britannia and Prince Regent, were ordered to be constructed to her lines. Neither of these would be completed until after the end of the Napoleonic Wars, which meant that she was the only one of her class to see action in that conflict which included almost capturing the French 74-gunner Romulus, until the latter ran so close to shore that Caledonia and the accompanying second-rate HMS Boyne couldn't close in on her. In 1819, another ship, HMS Royal George, was ordered, again to the same lines, but with an extra layer of fur planking, practice referred to as doubling, which increased the ship's beam and hence stability and capacity to bear ordnance. Five more ships were then ordered from 1819 to 1825, which formalised this broader beam using regular timber. The St George, Neptune, Waterloo, Royal William and Trafalgar. However, with peace came less urgency for construction, and these five vessels remained on the stocks, seasoning merrily away for years, only launching and commissioning in the late 1830s and early 1840s, which also meant that they would be armed with a new set of guns which the older Caledonias would also be refitted with. This initially consisted of a lower gun deck with 30 long 32-pounders, each of 5,600 weight, and a pair of 68-pound carronades, a middle gun deck with 32 4,800 weight 32-pounders, which were a foot and a half shorter, but still officially classified as long guns, 
albeit they used an eight pound charge as opposed to the 10 pound one. And they also had a pair of 68 pounder carronades on this deck. The upper gun deck had 32, the short 32 pounders of either 32 or 3300 weight, which were actually 24 pounders, which had been bored out and used a five pound charge and another pair of 68 pounder carronades. The quarter deck now had 16 32 pounder carronades. The Vauxhall had two long 32 pounders and two 32 pounder carronades. And all the 68 pounder carronades would later again be swapped out for eight inch shell guns. And the short 32 pounders replaced many of the 32 pounder carronades on the upper decks. Kept up with all that? Essentially, they became all 32 pounder ships, barring a few big carronades, which were later replaced by shell guns. The ship's careers varied somewhat. Caledonia lasted in active service until 1856, when she became a hospital ship and was renamed Dreadnought, eventually broken up in 1872. Britannia would see service in the Crimean War and bombarded Sevastopol before spending the second half of the 1850s as a hospital ship, and then became a training and barrack ship, which is where the name HMS Britannia for the Royal Navy's Dartmouth Training Centre got started. She was sold for breaking up in 1869, with subsequent replacements taking on the name. Prince Regent was razzed to a 92-gun second rate in 1847, saw service in the Crimean War, was converted into a 90-gun vessel with an auxiliary steam engine in 1860, rearmed with a large battery of 18 shell guns on the lower decks and 32-pounders elsewhere, and then spent just over a decade in reserve before being broken up in 1873. Royal George spent her time with sails alone, completely in reserve, with a screw system added in 1853, she was then razzed in 1860, spending the next 15 years as a guard ship before being broken up. The last five, the formerly widened set, all had similar careers, coming into service in the 1850s as guard ships, or in one case as part of the experimental squadron. All but Waterloo saw action in the Crimean War before being razzed down to 89-gun screw ships at the end of the 1850s, eventually becoming various forms of training ship and then being sold out of service over the latter part of the 19th century, with Trafalgar and Waterloo surviving into the 20th century. Waterloo getting the furthest, being lost to arson in 1918, whilst moored off of Woolwich. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.